Hey everybody, this is Frilly Off and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to build a 1.14 iron farm that fits in the one chunk farming complex. If you're an expert on iron golem spawning in 1.14 and you don't really want to know how this farm works, you just want to build it, then I'll put a timestamp in the description below. You can skip forward to the main tutorial. But if you are interested and it is very interesting, then stick around and I'll tell you. And also try not to build this within 48 blocks of another point of interest, uh, another bed or a bell or another workstation. It shouldn't affect the farm because of the path finding of the villagers. Because these villagers are completely encased and the corners are filled in, these guys will not be able to see any other point of interest around here or shouldn't be able to see any other point of interest around here. But don't, don't take that as gospel. Just be safe. Keep it at least 48 blocks away from any other point of interest. I'll put a list of everything you need to build this thing on screen now. So pause the video if you need to. So I'll give you a very quick and very basic overview of how iron farms work in 1.14. In 1.14, iron golems no longer require valid doors in order to spawn in a village. Villages per se no longer exist in 1.14. What they need now are villagers with beds and with workstations. A villager needs to speak to another five villagers. They need to accumulate gossip about an iron golem. They also need to have slept in a bed within the last 24,000 ticks and they need to have worked at their workstation within the last 36,000 ticks. So that's what a Minecraft day and a half. So once the village has spoken to another five villagers and they've all decided that they need an iron golem, an iron golem is going to spawn and it'll spawn within an area of 16 by 16 by 6 around the villager. It no longer uh, spawns around the centre of the village. As I say, villages no longer exist. It spawns around the individual, the, the villager itself. And then the villager's gossip values go down to nothing. And then he has to build those gossip values back up again by speaking to different villagers. And that's why iron golem farms currently need lots and lots of villagers in them. So villagers have got their daily routine. Uh, it starts off at zero ticks when they get up in the morning. And from zero ticks to 2000 ticks, they just mingle about. And this is the, the first time an iron golem can spawn when they're talking before they start work. So between zero ticks and 2000 ticks when they're Having a chat in the morning, that's when an iron golem can spawn. Between 2,000 ticks and 9,000 ticks, they're working. They'll be at their workstations, they won't be chatting to each other, and while they're not chatting to each other, no iron golems will spawn. Then at 9,000 ticks, afternoon, tea time, evening, chill time kind of thing, so between 9,000 and 12,000 ticks, they'll have another chat. This is the, the second time in the day when an iron golem can spawn and then at 12,000 ticks they all go to bed and overnight between 12,000 ticks and 24,000 ticks or zero ticks they're asleep they can't spawn an iron golem so what I'm going to do then I'm going to set the the time to 23,800 ticks which is just before they get up all of these actually I'll set it to to 23,000 to give these guys a chance to find their own beds. They'll all find their beds, they'll all get, in, they'll all get into bed and go to sleep. Uh, at zero ticks, they'll all jump out of bed and some of them will start yelling that they need a golem. Uh, and then a golem should spawn underneath here. Now, the way this works is that as of 1.14.1, in 1.14, they would spawn with their heads inside solid blocks. So that made this a little bit easier. Uh, as of 1.14.1, the pre-releases anyway, they will no longer spawn with their heads in a solid block. So we've had to put a checkerboard pattern underneath the bottom. And I'll explain this a little bit more when we do it. There's a checkerboard pattern under there. So the, the golems will spawn with their head inside the slab so they won't suffocate. But the water pushes them into the solid block and then they start to suffocate. Uh, which is what which is what kills the, the golems in this farm. Now, it does take a little bit longer for a golem to suffocate. But it's not really a problem because a villager has got a cooldown period anyway of a minute. Uh, 
Uh, so he, he, as soon as he spawned a golem, he can't spawn another golem for another minute. And he's also got to run around and find another five people that want a golem to spawn anyway. So the fact that it takes a little bit longer to uh, to kill the golem really doesn't affect the farm. So let's change the ticks to 23,000 so they'll find their way to bed. Let me put the, uh, the, uh, the daylight cycle on and then we'll set the time to 23,000. Uh, 7.50 so they'll all run off and they'll find the beds perfect and then zero ticks they'll all jump out of bed and already we've got three golems in there now as I say they'll spawn with their heads inside the slab but very quickly they'll get pushed into a solid block and then they'll start to suffocate and it does take them a while it's 30 seconds or so for them to suffocate while that's happening the other guys in there are as i say mingling first thing in the morning and uh, and if they decide they want another golem then it'll spawn down the bottom when they die the drops fall into the water get pushed to the middle get picked up by the hopper in the middle or They'll fall straight through, straight down the centre of your, your one chunk farm. Oh, we've, got, we've got loads in there. Perfect. It's not always as quick as this. Don't be, uh, uh, don't be loaded into a false sense that it's, it's a really, really quick farm. It's as quick as any other iron golem farm in 1.14 that's got this number of villagers in it. This is, this is no quicker than any other farm. We just happen to have we've got quite lucky there. So now it's at about 2,000 ticks. Let's find the, the time. Time query, daytime. It's now 1,880 ticks. So they've nearly, nearly finished chatting. And at 2,000 ticks, they will all start. There you go. You saw them do it. They'll all start trying to find their workstations. Now, their workstations are blast furnaces because they're armorers. I think they're armorers. I think they're, they're, armorers, they're armorers, aren't they? Blast furnaces are in the floor, so they can still access them. But it doesn't stop them from walking around and, and mingling and getting into their beds. Which is why I don't use composters, because if you put composters in the floor, there's a very good chance those guys will just jump inside them and then not move anywhere. So now they'll work until 9,000 ticks. Guy in there still, still dying. So if we change the, uh, the time now to uh, 8,900, 8, they're still working. And then all of a sudden at 9,000 ticks... There you go, 9,000 ticks. They all start talking again and we get another batch of golems spawned down the bottom. And then at 12,000 ticks, 7,900, 12,000 ticks, it's bedtime, they all go to bed. And the cycle starts again. So let me show you how to build this thing. So if you're building this as part of the one chunk farming complex, you can just stick this right on top of your, your current one chunk farm. This will fit right on the very top of it. If you're building this as a standalone unit, you're going to need an area that is 19 by 19. And that means that the main body of the farm, most of the, the gubbins inside are going to be inside the chunk. So once you've got your area that is 19 by 19, you want to take out your glass and you just need to put a wall all the way all the way around the outside that's too high. Now you want to take out a bucket of water and a, a temporary block. Put a temporary block in the corner and then put a bucket of water on top of that block. And then you want to do the same in all four corners. So stick that temporary block, bucket of water on top of it block bucket of water and then a block and a bucket of water now you need to fill in all the way along the sides now but be very very careful don't put any water on that block there next to that so on that block uh, leave that block free from water start putting your water there don't put it there put it there and I'm going to labor this point a little bit more do not put it there, 
put it there. If you put it there, you're going to fill the entire floor up with water source blocks. So not there, there. Okay, and then you can put down your water all the way along. And it's the same on this side. Do not put it next to the block. Put it on the one, uh, one further out. Okay. As I mentioned, if you put it there, you'll you'll fill the floor up. There'll be tears. Don't do it. Okay. So not there, not there. You want to put it there. Same on this side. Do not put it there. Put it there, and you'll be golden. So not there, but there. Okay, not, not there, but there. Not there. I know lots of you are going to be annoyed about me doing this, because apparently I talk too much anyway, but it's just vitally important. Do not put it there. Put it there. Okay, so now you've done that, you can break these blocks in the corners, and that way it gives an extra spawning space for the golems. So now you should have something that looks... A little bit like that. Now, if it's on the one chunk farming complex, you could just pop that, uh, pop the middle one out. That should fall straight down the centre of your farm. If it's a standalone, you can stick a um, a hopper there or hook it up to uh, another water chute that takes your your items off somewhere else. You don't need to kill the golems with lava in here anymore because of because of what I showed you over there, because the golems die and then just drop, they drop. So we're going to stick a, a hopper in there. Uh, but as I say, you can stick any kind of storage system you want. If you want to filter the poppies out, then you can do that as well. So we're going to stick a hopper there. I know that's going to go nowhere, so there's no need to comment in the in the comments. I know that that's uh, going to go into the side of the block. It's just there to show you that that's where the, the hopper goes. So now you've got that. Now you want to take out your, your block of choice again, our stone block. And you need to put a line of blocks all the way around the top of this glass. Like that. And now we need to start the checkerboard pattern. So you want to grab yourself some slabs and, and your solid block. And then make your way to any corner. Doesn't matter which corner. And then you need to put a slab, then a block, then a slab, then a block, then a slab, then a block. All the way around the outside. And then you want to do exactly the same again. So now you've got something that looks like that. So now's as good a time as any to stick down the beds. So what you want to do is you want to get yourself to a corner, any corner, and you want to stand right at the edge and you need to put a bed down here with the head of the bed facing inwards. It's got to be like that because when the, when the villagers jump out of bed, they jump out of the the top, the head side of the bed. If you put it that way around, they'll jump out this side, they'll jump onto the bed, they'll suffocate. Okay, so put it with the, the head of the bed facing inwards. And you want to do it all the way around the, the outside, the 13 beds on each side. Like that. And then grab yourself some carpet and you need to put four pieces of carpet in the corners. We don't want the, the villagers jumping out of these beds and landing in this corner. If they do, they won't be able to get out and into the centre of the farm to, to chat with each other or to access their workstations. So we need to put carpet there. And we also don't want anything spawning in the corners either. So now you've got something that looks like that. Now we need to put down the workstations, but there are a few workstations that you can't use because they're, they're not classed as solid blocks and they won't suffocate the golems. Uh, and those workstations are the grindstone, the stone cutter, the cauldron, the brewing stand or the composter. You, you can't use any of those, A, because the cauldron and the, the composter will allow the, uh, the villagers to fall into them and they won't get out. But the, they're not classed as solid blocks, so the, the golems won't suffocate, and you need the golems to suffocate. So use a, a loom or a barrel, a cartographer's table, fletching table, depending on whether you've built this out of uh, out of wood or out of stone or or whatever. But they're the uh, they're the crafting sorry they're the uh, the workstations that you can use, and these replace solid blocks for this particular part of the build. 
So take out your your workstation. I think I'm going to use a smithing table. And then you want to start in the corner again. And you want to do exactly the same checkerboard pattern. So start off with a slab. And then you want to do a, a smithing table. Then a slab, smithing table, slab, smithing table. So on and so forth. Around like this. And then fill in the middle with with your slabs. And then you want to take out your workstations again and then do exactly the same like this. And then fill it in with with slabs. Like that. And now we've got uh, we've got 44 workstations down there now, but we've got 52 beds. So we need to put down another eight workstations. So we do that by sticking them in the corners. So just go to each corner, put down two workstations there, two there, two there, six, two there, eight. So now you've got 52 workstations. And now we need to do the same checkerboard pattern that we did around the outside. So grab your slabs again. Put a slab there. And then finish it off with some slabs in the middle. So now you've got something that looks like that. Now whip out your glass again and we need to put a, a too high wall of glass around the outside of the farm. Just like we did down the bottom. So now you've got that. And now what we need to do is just put a roof on it. So now you should have something that looks like that. Now we don't want the guys in there to be in complete darkness. So grab yourself some glowstone or jack-o'-lanterns or, or sea lanterns. I'm going to use glowstone. And then just get to each corner. Pop out that block and just put a bit of glowstone in there. We're going to work our way in towards the middle. So do that there. That there. that there and then come in three blocks so one two third one there and you can pop out that block one two third one pop out that block two, that one and this one in fairness there's no right or wrong way to do this you just want to make sure because each one of those spaces in there is spawnable so you need to make sure that each one of those spaces in there has got a light level above seven it's below seven, then you bank, you're going to be banging trouble. You're going to have all kinds of mobs spawning in there. So do the lighting however you want. Just make sure that you light it up enough that mobs won't spawn in there. So now you should have something that looks like that. Now what we need to do is start putting some villagers in there. Now before you start putting villagers in there, make sure that you only put adults into the farm. Uh, and there's a very good reason for that. If you put babies in there or if you put a few adults in there and then try and breed them and they have babies in there, the babies are going to run around and babies like jumping up and down on beds. So they're going to start jumping up and down on the beds. And if they're stood on a bed when they grow up, their head is going to be in the roof and they're going to suffocate and die. OK, so don't put uh, but don't put babies in there and don't put villagers in there and then breed them. OK, breed them somewhere else in your breeder. Um, or breed them on top, make a make a, a, a new villager breeder just on the top here um, and then open the roof up once they're adults and just funnel them in. But don't put them in as babies. But you are going to need 52 villagers in there. I'm going to throw them in with a spawn egg because I can. Now, I think I've got 50 villagers in here, but I can't be 100% sure. And obviously, I can't count them now. So all you need to do is wait for it to get dark. And they'll all find a bed and go to sleep. And then you just need to count how many empty beds you've got. Come on, mate. Hurry up. Ain't got all day, you know. So we've got one... Two, two empty beds. So I was right. We had fifty. So just go and grab yourself another two, uh, two villagers. So you've got fifty-two. They'll find a workstation. They'll find a bed. That's it. Everybody's happy. 
Now, when you initially get your 50 village, 52 villagers in here, the first morning when they wake up, they'll have no gossip. So initially, your farm won't suddenly work right off the bat straight away uh, because they've got to accumulate the gossip. So you'll have to give it a cycle or two. They need to sleep. They need to work. Uh, so it's going to take them a full day and then they need to chat. So it's going to be a good couple of days. You are, mate. If they do that, it means they've lost their workstation. He forgot where his workstation was. He got up and then found it again. He went back to bed. Now, if you want this to work indefinitely, then you just got to make sure you build it inside a spawn chunk. If you don't build it in a spawn chunk, it'll stop working when you leave the area, when this chunk becomes unloaded. OK, so if you want it to work continuously, if you've got it on a server, then stick it in a spawn chunk if you can, and then it'll work continuously. So I'm going to run a little test now. I'm going to set this up and let it run for an hour. And we're going to see how many bits of iron we'll make. OK, so I've been running the test for a few hours now and I decided to do it slightly differently. I was going to run it for for a day, for a Minecraft day, uh, but uh, I didn't really see the point because I think there's a better way of doing it. Now, between, as I mentioned earlier, between 12,000 and 24,000 ticks, these guys do, they, they sleep, they do nothing. And between 2,000 ticks and 9,000 ticks, they just wander around looking at each other's workstations. So really, the only times that the, the golems will spawn between 0 ticks and 2,000 and between 9,000 and 12,000. So what I've done is make a spreadsheet that, that has a couple of columns on it that shows you the day, uh, shows you how many golems were spawned, shows you how much iron there was spawned, and then that gives you a, a rough breakdown of how many pieces of iron are produced each day by each villager in the farm. So if we have a quick look at that now... So you can see that on day one, and I've, I've used the, the calculation that a golem will drop a poppy every time it spawns and dies. So that's that's what the, the golem figure is. It's how many poppies were collected. So if, if they don't drop a poppy every time, then this is not 100% accurate. But I think they do, or I think they, they drop one most of the time. So on day one, we had 25 golems. They made 95 pieces of iron, which equates to 1.83 pieces of iron per day per villager. Now, as I mentioned, the, the, the 95 iron were collected between 0 ticks and 2,000, between uh, 9,000 and 12,000. So what I did was I slept through the night and then the, the golem started to spawn in the morning. Then nothing happened in the afternoon, but I, I, I didn't skip the time. I sat here and watched them just walk about just in case there was any gossip being uh, being banded about while the uh, while they were while they were working i don't think there is but i just wanted to just wanted to make sure so i sat here and watched them and then they uh, they chatted again between 9000 and 12000 more golems spawned so we had 95 on the on the first day and on the second day we only had 14 golems 55 pieces of iron third day 18 72 so as you can see it was it wasn't bad i mean all right we've got 52 villages in there so this is never going to be as productive as an iron alpha but it's it's about as productive if we if i were to put uh what 52 villagers in one of the old 1.13 iron farms i wouldn't expect to get that much iron i think uh back in the day back in 1.13 a, a one village iron farm would make about 45, 50 pieces of iron an hour. And that was spread out through the entire 24 hours. So if you slept through the night, you potentially could lose out on uh, on golem spawns because they would still spawn overnight. With this farm, they won't spawn overnight. So you can sleep through the night and not worry about losing any spawns. Uh, and so as you can see, the, uh, the iron rates varied a little bit, but I was quite pleased with the the overall performance of this thing. I just thought that was interesting. I don't, some of you probably won't think it's interesting. And probably a few of you just think I'm banging on for no reason. But there you go. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A, an iron farm that fits inside the one chunk farming complex that works in 1.14.1. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, everybody. If you have, please don't forget to leave it a like. And if you've really loved it, don't forget to subscribe for future tutorials. This is Frilly Off, and I'm out of here.